am here at Salutalia Hospital with Mia Se, uh, who is working in the art department at uh, the Stockholm region. And you are acquiring art to uh, a lot of public spaces in the hospitals in Stockholm. Can you tell us a little bit how that works? And we are speaking English, by the way, because this is something that we need to speak about in a larger context than only Sweden, I think. Yeah, for sure. Um, correct. I'm working with public art for Region Stockholm's art department. And um, we get financed by the construction projects. Uh, one percentage of, percentage of the construction projects uh, are set aside for art. And um, this is then given to the art department and we work with this money. So for instance, for Södertälje Hospital in this case, uh, it was six million uh, just for art, and it in six the million kroners. That's more or less six hundred thousand euros. Exactly. Mm. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and you said that, um, like, how the whole process looks like. Um, once the project is decided, then. Uh, we initiate the project by um, writing a program, an art program that is then decided by the, by the politicians. So this is a visionary text and in this text we also describe the context, we describe the different um, rooms that we would like to work with, the different sites and um, then we hire an art consultant that we work together with and ex as an expertise. And we work always with open calls for our commissions. And part of the budget is also set aside, of the art budget is also set aside for purchases. Um, and... Of oh, sort of like ready art. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That we buy either from the artist or the galleries or um, uh, artist run spaces, so to speak. And when we do our open calls, we um, announce them quite wide and we get approximately about three to five hundred um, submissions mm -hmm. from artists. It's a lot. It's a lot and uh, it takes quite a while to go through everything. And we select then two artists that will do proposals and compete to one another. So for instance, um, we are standing now in a corridor mm -hmm. uh, that leads to a women's department. Kind of a typical hospital corridor. Exactly. So in this case, this corridor then leads to the elevators. And um, we decided to formulate this as a commission for an artist. and. Brad Downey is an American artist who's living in Berlin and he made a proposal which uh, won and his idea in this case was to sort of enhance the corridor with healing energies so he would take objects from the um, building of the hospital which wasn't ready at that point mm -hmm and he traveled with the objects to different healing sites and then loaded them with energy and then brought the objects back, installed them in the corridor and also together with these photographs where he photo document his acts. So I think a hospital is kind of a complex context to work with art. Definitely since it's not a white cube <laughs> in, in any aspect. It's, um, it's a space where people work, the staff work, and people are moving around and also there's a lot of traffic with uh, different um, transportations of food, etc., et laundry. And um, it's a hospital is a scenery of both birth and death and everything in between, a lot of different emotions. 
and you need to think quite carefully when you do art in this context, what, what you bring into this context, so to speak. Definitely. I mean, art in the public space is already kind of different as uh, in comparison with art in the white cube. But here there are some special concerns that you need to, to, to be considerate of. Yes, absolutely. And I would say that, like for instance, in, in this case, this is a horizontal space and it's mainly walls, but it's a passage. So the artist needs to deal with the space and how people move in the space. If it's a waiting section, then people sit down and they um, stay there for a longer time. In this case, it's a corridor where people pass kind of quick and you need to grasp the idea fast. So a totally different way to work with space is in another commission that we have in the elevator, mm. uh, which then is a vertical space. And this commission was given to um, Siri Tolander, Swedish artist, that at the time she applied for this commission, she was still a student at the Royal College of Art. And when we go through all the applications, the artist hand in reference images of previous works. And we decided at the art department at Region Stockholm, we decided quite early on that we really wanted artists that never had had commissions before would be able to have the chance to, to do commissions. Why did you decide that? At the Region Stockholm Art Department we, s we wanted to sort of broaden the field because we saw a tendency that most public art agencies asked for experience within the public art field and this sort of shut the door for new artists and um, we also saw that often the same artist was hired or the public art agencies worked with the same artists all over Sweden. Mm -hmm. So it was just a few artists working in this field and um, we wanted to broaden the field, we wanted to have more diversity, we wanted to work with artists within all kinds of expressions and to make it possible um, to, uh, to work with artists in all kinds of medias, even within this hospital context. Mm -hmm. And therefore we decided that since we ask for proposals, we always um, gave the possibility to two artists to to compete mm. and this gave us the chance to work that we maybe selected one artist with more experience and then one artist with no experience mm. <coughs> and um, in the case with Siri um, she had images from her own apartment <coughs> where she had placed the sculptures she was creating and for me, at least, it was very clear from the beginning that she, she knew how to handle space. Um, and I didn't, I didn't need an example that she had produced an artwork for a public space, mm. because it was so clear from this images that she could handle this situation mm -hmm. and <clears throat> when she handed in the proposal um, she she showed that she managed this ex in an excellent way mm -hmm. uh, it's a really difficult and tricky space um, it's i think nine floors and it's the elevators and also uh, staircase. Mm. We will go and, and ha have a look at it uh, in a, just a little while, but since you mentioned um, <coughs> that you are somehow within the political structure, mm -hmm. um, how is it, is it possible to work freely without, 
you know, politicians sort of like going through your artworks, your choices of art. I bet, I mean, contemporary art is not always politically zeroed. It's, prob mm. it's charged with a lot of things. Absolutely. And particularly in today's climate, uh, with a lot of different voices going around. Mm -hmm. How do you manage this? Um, I would say that we are kind of lucky in, in, uh, in region Stockholm to have politicians that uh, really uh, perform this armlängs avstand, <laughs> which is... Uh, Arms length. Yeah, distance. Mm. Uh, this is um, that politicians should not be a, in detail deciding about art. So in our case, we present to them this more visionary text and then we do all the decisions. But we have, of course, when you are in this kind of context, you are closely in collaboration with the staff, for instance, and also with the construction company. Mm -hmm. And we always have to take into account the, the patients, what kind of patients we have at the different departments. Uh, it might be um, a department where people are giving birth, which is quite a different space from a, a small room where you take far farewell from someone that has died. Mm, yes. uh, so you really have to think about um, the situation for the for the patient, which can also be very sick and traumatized and so on. Um, but of course, we need to negotiate quite a lot <laughs> um, to raise knowledge about art mm -hmm. to be able to work with different kinds of uh, content and expressions. Yeah. Tell me, is that problematic? Do you find it problematic in a way that you have to sort of like educate people about contemporary art when you step into a hospital? Or is it easy or is it fun? <clears throat> Um, I mean, I think it depends on what kind of person you are. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, I'm, I'm, um, I'm a curator. I'm, I'm skilled at producing art. I'm skilled at coaching artists. I think this is fun. Um, to be in the situation where you educate the staff, for instance, or the group that you work with uh, about art, I feel personally, for me, sometimes um, it's a challenge. <laughs> And I mean, sometimes you meet a group that is really open-minded and just welcomes anything. And sometimes you have a few like this, and then you have a few who's not so interested or even against um, m most art, so mm -hmm. to speak. But you're, you're talking about the, the staff now, right? What about the patients? Do you encounter problems with patients as well? Or mm -hmm. not problems, I should say, but mm -hmm. sort of like that you have to raise the level of, you know, knowledge about contemporary mm -hmm. art, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, patience is, uh, is um, something that we are looking into at the moment, actually, um, because it's so valuable uh, for us uh, to get their feedback. I mean, sometimes we get feedback, perhaps if they tell the staff or if they leave a note or something like this. And most often it's when people, because people get upset about art. It can be yeah. There's a, lot a of color, yes. a really, yeah, uh, provocative color or like, yeah. And, and it can also be the content or something. But um, I would say that you said that the group was the staff, but it's not really. It's a mixture of both maybe the communication department at the mm -hmm. hospital and also of course staff from the different wards and then also this um, maintenance uh, company because if in comparison to the white cube at an art space or a museum then you have staff working all every day to take care of the art 
But in this kind of context, it's just part of the furniture, it's like the interior design. And you, you need to think about these kind of aspects as well. It has to be secure, yeah. yes. it has to be hygienic since it's a, a hospital. So it's so many different aspects that needs to uh, be taken into account at mm -hmm. the same time. So I would say that even if we look at art with different eyes, perhaps, then many times um, they can come with suggestions that are really valuable. Um, mm. No, I completely understand that. But there's a, a one question that appears then from the other part, namely the artist, I would suspect. How do you avoid making, creating a space for the art within the hospital where the art is sort of like becoming interior design only? Because you still want the art to be art. Mm -hmm. And that must be some, <coughs> somehow tricky sometimes, I could imagine only. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, yes, to, to answer your question a bit longer, <laughs> I think that um, for me, who had been working as a curator with exhibitions previously, um, I, I felt that I couldn't work in the same way that I had before, uh, because when you do an exhibition, you are more in control of um, directing people in in the way they move in the space and how they, in, in which order they uh, encounter the artworks. And you kind of create a, a concept, you, you have a choreography in a way. Um, and at the hospital, this is not possible yeah. because you can never control in what way the uh, visitor will enter the building <laughs> or to which ward they will visit, etc. So I found that in working with this context, it's more about, um, how, how can I ex say, uh, more sites, individual sites, than interconnected uh, with one another. And um, uh, I think to avoid the art to become interior design, you should work with artists that create art and not interior design. Mm. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's kind it's a of... a smart answer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for instance, like this artist, Brad Downey, he had been... I knew his work from before, and he makes many kind of actions, often political actions in public space, so I was a little bit curious he, how he would handle to be in this very strict uh, environment uh, with many regulations, which he normally broke. Mm. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but um, I guess he just applied the same way of method, but did it very successfully in this kind of context, which is very regulated. Mm. He was thinking that if I would be stuck in a, at a hospital, what do I need in this space? And then he, he was thinking, I just want to get out of there. I just want to have like a window to escape through. And then Let's he go. came up with this idea. And I think it's really about what you as an artist can sort of give give to the space, give to the staff, and give to the patients. Mm -hmm. Here I see there's a, a window from the hospital. Yes, and it's actually this window. Uh -huh, it's that window, sorry. Yes. <clears throat> so this is the window, and we tried to make it really super clear <laughs> by putting up this sign. <laughs> uh, like, this is the window. So during the construction of the hospital, he managed to get some parts that were then going to be uh, in the hospital. Mm. So he got six different objects. He got this chair, mm. which he <coughs> traveled to Stonehenge to. And then he got this window, 
<coughs> and he traveled to, uh, to Lourdes in France. And he also got a radiator, which he traveled to Machu Picchu, and a piece of the flooring <coughs> that you can see here <laughs> in this image. Uh, <laughs> to Chichen Itza in Mexico. Oh, so the, it's located in the corridor of the house. <coughs> it's really nice place. Right. But this is a commission that you had time and you had money. Yeah, and, and still we saw that even if we thought we were very um, pedagogical in the way that we tried to present it, then still it became a bit unclear for, <coughs> for the staff and the patients what the project was about. Really? <coughs> yes, and so in dialogue with the hospital, we then decided to make this addition. We added this. So this is a paper for the waiting section <coughs> where the project is described. <coughs> and where is that? Where, where can you find this magazine? Um, in the waiting sections. Ah. Unfortunately, now during Corona, uh, they took away all papers of from course, the waiting yeah. section. So. Mm. <coughs> but do you always work with new commissions for with contemporary artists, or do you work with? old art, let's say. We always combine the old art with the new art. Mm -hmm. uh, so we mix them to make a whole. And that's, let's say, when, I, when we are talking about old art, we are talking about art that was once perhaps commissioned or bought or... Uh, yes, precisely. So um, it's from the region Stockholm um, collection, I don't know if the collection is the right word, <laughs> since we're not a museum. Um, but for the new money that we receive for each project, mm. uh, we buy contemporary art from living artists. So this is this a is way mission, to support. Right? Yes, mm. exactly. So this is a way to support artists uh, living today and producing uh, contemporary art. This is quite unique, actually. Yeah, perhaps, yes. No, I think so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, over time, uh, buildings are being uh, rebuilt, and then the artworks are moved. And then we try to <coughs> um, mix the old art together with the new art. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I suspect, what is the worst challenge with this? Uh, the biggest challenge? Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> Yeah, I think that um, the biggest challenge is maybe during these political times, mm -hmm. I would say, to keep this distance uh, from the politicians, because we are getting questions all the time about um, um, how the citizens should be more involved in deciding what kind of art should be in the spaces, and, and also, I know from my colleagues working at other public agencies that they, the politicians there, in the cities for instance, um, very much look into detail uh, of like every work that is going to be bought, which is a very bureaucratic way to, and, and takes a lot of time, uh, so it's difficult for them to work. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I think that uh, another challenge is uh, the negotiation. That you always have to sort of <laughs> negotiate sometimes about money, uh, sometimes about the space that you have seen on the drawings um, that you would like to work with, or maybe um, uh, the staff that they have a lot of uh, opinions of their own uh, that you have to take into account. So it's, I mean, it's a power relation and everyone is sort of fighting for their own 
uh, area of expertise, mm -hmm. yes. should, so to speak. So I think that maybe the staff, they, they in their horizon, this is their um, sort of living room, this is the space where they work every day and they would like to be surrounded with objects that they like. And they usually want to uh, be very closely involved in the process, which sometimes can be um, a bit complicated and sometimes, of course, just very rewarding. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's like, cool. for instance, ah. I mean, if you take the, this uh, commission for, as an example, mm -hmm. then this whole corridor was sort of um, set aside for a, a corridor for art, but then still, uh, the staff, they had some objects from their previous ward, the previous department that they wanted to bring uh, to this new building. So when they found a, a spot on the wall which was free, they then uh, squeezed the objects into this space, which I try to argue that this is now coming just in between the artwork mm -hmm. uh, in a way that is not uh, working, very, no. working very well. No. For instance, like the, the, that work, uh, it pictures the handles, the door handles. This one? Yeah. Uh, this one there. Mm. It pictures the door handles. Mm. And the door handles are in fact installed here. So this is a way sort of to activate the whole artwork. So you come from the elevator and you activate the artwork by open the door by taking these door handles which then have been to Dragon Cave in Thailand. Mm. So you are imbued with this healing energy <laughs> as you enter the corridor. Mm. <laughs> And then it becomes a little bit strange that the first object that <laughs> you pass uh, is then this vitrine with um, mm. ceramics. Mm. Yes, that has absolutely nothing to do with the artwork. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, now I see that. That can be quite problematic. So uh, we just had to step out of the corridor from where that. Um, down Brad Downey, Brad mm -hmm. Downey see. and now we're with this work where that you spoke about before, made with made by Siri Tolander. Tolander, tell us about it. Yeah, a um, space, this is a completely different space. As you can see, it's a vertical space in nine floors, and it's kind of a complex uh, space where you have this staircase, and you also have the elevators, and. Um, Siri made this solution, which I think was a, a brilliant way to deal with the space. Uh, and uh, she has these kind of formations on the wall, as you see there, the green ones, um, which is an inspiration from aircrafts, actually. And she kind of created a fantasy about these kind of spaces as small cottages or small living spaces for a kind of creature that was living parallel with the hospital here at the hospital mm -hmm. and uh, they used these kind of elements that you see over there and over there and also the stairs ah, okay, to yeah. move around at the hospitals in the spaces like in between that no one else uses. Um, and as I said, this was her first public commission and she was still a student when she applied. And I think that from looking at her images of how she had worked with sculpture and how she had placed them uh, in space, it was kind of obvious to me that she would deal, manage to deal with this kind of space, mm -hmm. even if it's a very complicated space. When was this finished? In 2017, ah, okay. um, the whole hospital, this is a completely new hospital in one way that was kind of linked to the old hospitals, which was cons um, consisting of separate buildings. 
So they created uh, this building. Uh, it's almost like a, a U, <laughs> mm -hmm. and with this yard in between. Mm. And here you can see also, so I said that it's not possible to direct the visitor and how they perceive art, but still, as you can see here, you come out and you, of course, encounter this, and you're also able at the same time to see this artwork at the inner yard. Mm. And when I, I, I asked you to, to talk about to find to give me three works that you wanted to, to that you were particularly proud of, uh, <laughs> not only because of the work in itself, but how it's also integrated in the hospital. So mm -hmm. you have a third one, I suspect. Yes, uh, absolutely. We I think we can head there. Yeah. Uh, it's we need to cross the building. Yeah. So come Let's on. Go. You asked like um, uh, me to sort of present the, the, your favorite works. And maybe uh, what I selected instead was artworks that, that have dealt with different types of uh, spaces uh, and different kinds of challenges mm. in, within these spaces. As we saw with Brad, it was a um, horizontal space. It was a passage where people move by. And in, with Siri Tolander, it was more a, a vertical space mm -hmm. and had very many different kind of elements that had to be taken into account. And um, then also, of course, we have spaces outside. And like, I think that you also asked about, so what kind of challenges do you see? Well, I think where we are standing now, this is a kind of good example where you have to realize that this is not a white cube, this is a space w which is used, and here comes visitors that need to orient themselves. Maybe they can be very confused or uh, in, in stress. And some of them have um, uh, brain problems maybe, and difficulties in, in finding their way. And I think this is a very good example where the hospital has um, tried to be clear with signs, but instead it's so many signs that you don't even find your way. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah. And before all the signs, um, we saw this, this space as a way to create an artwork that could also help with the orientation. And um, I think if, if you look at this, you have one, two different wards. One ward is for elderly people, mm -hmm. and one ward okay. is for children. Okay. And the challenge here was that when they all went out from the elevator, they should then understand to which side they were going to go. Mm. And we also wanted to take care of this space um, in a way that could meet both these groups uh, with a large um, span in, in age. Uh, so this is an example of a, a work that was purchased but then the artist was asked to do something site-specific. And I think um, uh, that he, he, um, he made it in a very brilliant way. Like he usually uh, works with text-based art. Uh, he works in public space, he's very used to deal with tricky kind of spaces and um, Unfortunately, then uh, the, the, name of the, artist? Uh, the, the name of the artist is Alexander Kulansky, also known as AK. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and um, it, as you can see, the space then transformed into a waiting section, uh, which was not um, there from the beginning. Mm. So this is also something that we encounter often, that spaces shift function 
which is a challenge to art in mm. many ways. Definitely, yeah. Mm. And um, as you can see, the, the, the words uh, or the, the letters are forming the word trust. And I think this was a word that sort of works for both uh, departments in this case and also something which is kind of essential when you enter a hospital or any authority of any kind that uh, it's actually about trust between people. And uh, so I think uh, in, in this work, he captured sort of the essence <laughs> of, um, of what you need to work with in this kind of environment. Which brings me to what maybe becomes a problem afterwards when you see the work maybe installed with lots of different things on the side. Yes, absolutely. And I think this is the tricky part because we cannot be like um, the police running after and checking like is everything like it was be when we installed it. So I think um, of course it, it hurts a little bit that the artwork cannot be the way it was thought to be, but also we need to be kind of flexible and understand and understand that uh, this is uh, a hospital that is being used by patient and staff and it needs to function, it needs to be pragmatic and, and therefore in, to some extent we have to accept. And trust. And trust. <laughs> And educate. I think this is also a part like if you if you have a close dialogue with the staff and, and all um, collabor collaborators in your project, there is also an understanding and a pride perhaps in, um, in the artworks that then uh, makes them ambassador for art, which is really fantastic. I feel ownership. Absolutely.